Hello and welcome to today's lesson on linear equations. It's going to be about those topics under the study island lesson, linear equations, and then also the topics under the standard 1.1 in 8th grade. So if you're working in either of those two places, this is a place you can come to get extra help and I'm glad that you chose to join us. So as always, remember that you can pause, rewind, and fast forward so that you can be taking notes. I highly recommend that you take notes while you're watching these videos. And you can also pause at the beginning of a question, work the problem out, and then watch the question so you can see where you're doing really well and maybe some places that you need some work. Um, and this video here, this is a topic that you're going to be working on in Algebra 1 also, so you're going to want to pay close attention so you can remember for years to come. And I'm glad that you're joining us, and let's go ahead and look at some notes. When we write equations, in eighth grade, they're always going to be in what's called slope-intercept form, which means we're going to have y equals a number x plus or maybe minus a number. And so that number that's in front of x, we call that m, and that stands for the slope number. And then the number that's being added or subtracted at the end, that's our y-intercept number. And we'll go over what those two words mean in just a minute. And so here, this is an example of an equation. You have 2 over 1, or just 2, is going to be your slope, your rise over run, and then the 3 at the end is going to be your y-intercept, so where it crosses the y-axis. So slope, when you are looking at a slope, you can have positive slope, negative slope, zero slope is a horizontal line, and then undefined slope is a vertical line. So if that number that is in front of the x, so this one right here, is a positive number, then it has to be an uphill line. If it's a negative number, it has to be a downhill line. And here, if there is no x term, that means it's 0. And here, if there's no y, and these, that means it's going to be undefined. Now you may need to calculate the slope formula or the slope number so you can put it in here and there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you are doing it on a graph, you can calculate it by counting how much you're rising over how much you're running from two points and then look to see if it's a positive line or a negative line. Or you can use this formula where you subtract two y numbers on the top and subtract their two corresponding x numbers on the bottom. And we'll do some examples using that, but make sure you have that done in your notes to reference. And then that y-intercept part, remember that's the part at the end, the number that's being added or subtracted. This number here, the definition of that is the point where a line crosses or intersects the y-axis. And so we often use the letter b to talk to represent the y-intercept. And so here, this is your y-intercept. So if it was crossing the y-axis at 2 there, then this would be a 2 in the exam in, in the equation. Okay, so make sure you're looking at where it crosses the y-axis, and this is a non-example, so not the x-axis. This is not correct. And so let's go ahead and, once you have those notes down, let's go ahead and look at some problems. So here they give us an equation, and they want to know which graph does this equation match. So <clears throat> what I'm going to look at first in this equation is the fact that the number in front of x there is a negative one-half. So that means that my slope is going to be a negative one-half. And then the number that is completely by itself at the end there is a positive two. So that means my y-intercept is going to be two. So now I'm just looking for the graph that has these two characteristics. So the easy one to rule out first is the y-intercept. So look at w. Here's my y-axis. They label it y. It crosses at 2. So w is in the running. Okay, I'm looking at x. It crosses the y-axis at negative 1. So x cannot be an answer. Okay, y the graph crosses the y-axis at 2, so it's still in the running, but z, it crosses at negative 2, so it can't be z. So I've just eliminated half of my choices. And now I'm going to look, it's a slope of a, is a negative one-half, so that means I need a downhill line. 
So here, W, that's going uphill, so it can't be W. Y, it is going downhill, and that's my last choice, so it's most likely right. But let's go ahead and just double check that it is a slope of negative one half. So to do that, I'm going to put find two places on the graph where it crosses the corner of the grid paper, and then I'm going to count my rise over run. So I'm going to go down one, so it's going to have a rise of one, and then I run one, two, so that's two on the bottom, and then it's a negative downhill line, so it is negative one half. So that means that letter Y there is definitely going to be my answer. This next problem is very similar. They give us an equation to match to the appropriate graph. So right away, I'm going to look at the number that's in front of the x term, the coefficient of x, and that's a 1 half. So my slope here is going to be a positive 1 half. And then the number that's being added and subtracted at the end there is a, one, is a minus 1. So that means that my y-intercept is going to be a negative 1. So that means I'm going to be looking for a graph where the line crosses the y-axis at negative 1. So I'm going to start with that one to see if I can eliminate any answer. Here it crosses the y-axis at negative 1, so w stays. x it crosses at negative 2, so it can't be x. y it crosses at negative 1, so it could be y. And then z it crosses at 2, so it can't be z. So that eliminates me down to w and y. It's a positive slope, so that means I need an uphill line. And so the only one here that's going uphill is W. And so once again, it's always a good idea to just double check that it is an actual slope of one half. So I'm going to look for two places that the line crosses the grid paper. And so there's two places there. And so we're going to go. It goes up one, so that's my rise, over my run, one, two, I run two, so that means my slope there is one half. So that means my answer is going to be W, which is letter C. These next set of questions give you a starting equation and graph and ask if we were to do this change, what would be the new graph? So here, our original equation is y equals 1 third x plus 1. And here, they want to change the slope to 2. So that means instead of having a 1 third in front of x there, now we're going to have a 2 in front of x, and we still have that plus 1. So that's going to be our new equation. And it's a good idea to write down your new equation and not try to do it in your head. So... I'm going to be looking at these ones here, and I'm looking for one that crosses at the, the y-axis at positive 1, for that plus 1 at the end. So <clears throat> I'm looking here. This one crosses at negative 1, so it can't be w. This one, cross, x crosses at positive 1, so it could be x. y crosses at positive 1, so it could be y. z crosses at positive 2, so it can't be z. And so now I'm looking at the slope. Well, the slope here is 2, so that means it's a 2 over 1, because you can always put a 1 underneath a fraction. And that means here I'm looking at which one of these <clears throat> will go up by 2 and run 1. So I'm going to look for two places that this crosses on the grid paper. And it's a little difficult because... This didn't um, take a picture well, but here is, if we go up here, there's one place that it crosses the corner of the grid paper, and here's another place. And so if we count our rise, we go up one, two, so it's a rise over two, and then run one. It's a, our slope here is two over one, so it's going to make x our answer. Whereas y... If we look at the two places that it crosses the grid paper at a corner, you rise 1 and run 2, it's 1 half instead of 2. So that's why your final answer here is going to be X, which is letter C. 
So this problem here, they're saying you're starting with y equals 3x, but you want to change the slope to 0. So that means instead of having a 3 here, we're now going to have a 0. Well, 0 times anything is itself, so you're going to have y equals 0 as your equation. And remember back to our notes, when you have a slope of 0, that means you're going to have a horizontal line, so a line that goes straight left to right. So y and z are vertical lines, and then w and x are the horizontal lines that we could have. If you notice here, there's no number being added or subtracted, so we assume that that's a plus 0 there at the end, because there's nothing there, so it's 0. So that means that it's gonna, our line has to touch the y-axis at 0. This one touches at 0. This one, x, touches at 3, so it can't be x. So that means my final answer is going to be w, which is letter b. In this problem here, they say our original equation is y equals 1 half x. And then they're saying which of the following of the graph is y equals 1 half x plus 2. So they added on a y-intercept. They took it from being 0, nothing, to a plus 2. The slope stayed the same. So that means it's going to have to cross the y-axis at positive 2. So w here crosses at negative 2, so it can't be w. x crosses at positive 2, so it could be x. y crosses at negative 1, so it can't be y, and then z crosses at positive 1, so it can't be z. x is the only one that crosses the y-axis at 2, so it's the only one that has a y-intercept of 2, so that means my final answer here is going to be c. This question here says, what will the point be above when the, what will the point of the line above go through when x equals 20? So that means when you go all the way out here to when x equals 20, what is that coordinate of the line going to be? So you know, first of all, that the x coordinate has to be 20, which these all are. And it's going to be down here where y is negative. So right away you can eliminate b and d. However, we have to find a precise way of figuring out if it's going to be negative 37 or negative 43. So that means that we're going to have to write the equation. So to write the equation, you're just going to fill in the slope number and the y-intercept number. So here I'm going to count, find two places that it crosses the grid paper on the corners, and I'm going to count my rise over run. So here I count 1, 2, I rise 2, and I run 1, and it's a downhill line, so it's going to be a negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2x with the y equals. And then it crosses the y-axis at positive 3, so it's going to be a plus 3 at the end there. And once I have this equation, I know that x is 20, so I can fill in the 20 for x and see what that y number would be for my answer. So following rules of operations, I do multiplication first. Negative 2 times 20 is negative 40. And then negative 40 plus 30 is a negative 37. So that means my y coordinate here would be negative 37, making my final answer a. This is the same type of problem, only now they're giving us the y number instead of the x number. So the first step is going to be to fill in my slope and y-intercept number. So I'm going to look for two places where it crosses the grid paper. And so there's two there. So it looks like I rise one, and then I also run one. And it's another downhill line, so it's going to be a negative one over one which just simplifies to negative 1x. And then I'm going to look to see where it crosses the y-axis. It crosses at negative 2, so that means I'm going to have a minus 2 here at the end, and that's my equation. This time I know the y number, so I'm going to substitute negative 42 in for y, and then I'm going to have to solve for x. So that means I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Negative 42 plus 2 is negative 40 equals negative 1x, and then I have to divide both sides by negative 1, and negative 40 divided by negative 1 is positive 40, 
and that's going to be my x value. So there's 40 as an x coordinate, and y is negative 42, so that means b is going to be my final answer. This next problem here is you have to solve the equation that you're given first and then match it to which of these number lines. So letter A, for example, is saying that your answer would be x equals 44 because that's where the dot is. So if we go over here, and I'm just going to rewrite this equation real quick, and I'm going to solve for x. So it's a two-step equation because I have two answers on the left, or two numbers on the left side with x. So the first one I always want to move is the one that doesn't have an x term, the one that's being added or subtracted, and I'm going to do the opposite of that. So it's a minus 3, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So these cancel and I'm left with 1 fourth x equals 7 plus 3 is 10. And so now I have to divide both sides by 1 fourth. And remember that when you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying, but you have to flip the second fraction. So that's going to become 4 over 1. I'm going to put a 1 under the 10. 10 times 4 is 40, and 1 times 1 is 1, multiplying the tops with the tops and the bottoms with the bottoms. And 40 over 1 is the same as 40. So that means x here equals 40. So I'm going to look to see which one of these has a number on the number line at 40, a dot there, and that is B. It has a dot at 40, so that makes B my final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.